Voting for municipal elections in Navi Mumbai and Aurangabad held today. Elections seen as acid test for ruling BJP and Shiv Sena. Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis reiterates commitment for providing affordable housing, promises early introduction of a revised development plan for Mumbai. Hello and welcome to Metro Scan from Mumbai. I am Shama Mishra and now the news in detail. The voting for Navi Mumbai and Aurangabad municipal elections were held today. Voting percentage in Navi Mumbai till 3.30 p.m. was 43%, while in Aurangabad it was 47%. The fate of 568 contestants from Navi Mumbai and 104 contestants from Aurangabad are locked in the EVMs. A large number of police force had been deployed in order to make the voting process smooth. While, polling, while the polling process went smooth in Navi Mumbai, a small dispute erupted between party workers of Congress and MIM in Aurangabad. This municipal election is seen as an asset test for ruling BJP Shiv Sena, who is sharing power in Maharashtra after a gap of 15 years. While the BJP and Shiv Sena have retained their alliance in both Navi Mumbai and Aurangabad, erstwhile partners NCP and Congress are fighting it out independently. Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis has assured that the new development plan for Mumbai will be introduced in coming four months. He also added that three-member committee has been constituted to inspect the pending works of Pune Development Plan. डीपी के संदर्भ में जो कमेटी हमने तैयार की थी, उस कमेटी ने जो रिकमेंडेशंस हमको दिए, वो रिकमेंडेशंस अभी हमने उन सूचनाओं के आधार पर हमने ये घोषणा की है कि किस प्रकार से आगे की कार्रवाई होगी। जरूर चीफ सेक्रेटरी को मैं ये भी कह रहा हूँ कि जो गलतियाँ एपरेंटली दिखाई पड़ती हैं, वो जान Farnavis was speaking at Vision Maharashtra program, which was organized by National Real Estate Development Council of India. Recalling Prime Minister Narendra Modi's dream to provide house to all citizens by the year 2022, Farnavis said that the government of Maharashtra is committed to contribute to that and is determined to execute the plan, refusing to give any relief in premium rates to builders and denying involvement of architect in finalizing approval Chief Minister stated that land is the prime resource of the government to collect revenue for public interest and government is not willing to take any risk which will cause another Kampa Kola compound saga. Talking on transparency, he informed that Ordinance for Right to Service Act is all set to be introduced shortly. After enactment of this ordinance, all government departments will have to come out with notification of cost, time and delivery of services. However, State Industry Minister Subhash Desai has demanded strong action against architect of current development plan of Mumbai advocating BMC. Desai said that BMC should be the planning authority on the top. The Australian Minister for Trade and Investment, Andrew Robb, said that India needs expertise in various sectors from Australia. Speaking to DD News, the minister added his country sees opportunity for contributing and also India will be benefiting from Australia. Uh, you mentioned that you've come in India several times. Yes. So what is it that you are attracted to India and uh, what is there in your mind related to trade and investment this time? Well, first and foremost, I think India's time has come. Um, it really is on the move. I think it's going to bring hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, hundreds of millions of its citizens in the next few years. Um, there's a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, we would like to play a small part in um, helping that economic phenomena that's starting to emerge in India. You also mentioned uh, that uh, uh, India needs expertise from Australia. Could you elaborate on that thing? Well, uh, India, um, you know, 1.2 billion people and lots of very experienced expertise in India, but it's not all over the country. And um, to increase, if you like, the bandwidth of uh, expertise in India, uh, I think it would be very worthwhile um, for both countries if a lot of our world-class services companies, you know, aged care services, health services, education services, water management services, if these things were able to come and set up and work alongside uh, Indian companies and provide that expertise. 
I think that would um, be a good contribution. At the same time, similar opportunities are available in Australia for Indian companies. Lastly, uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, how would you describe India-Australian relationship and also how would you like to take it from here? Well, they've been long-standing, friendly. We share a lot in common, especially the love of cricket. Uh, but I think we're on the cusp of uh, a, a most profound increase in our relationship. There's so much we can do for one another and be part of the... The, the miracle, the economic miracle, the humanitarian miracle that's going on within our region. Thank you so much for talking to us. Okay. Thank you. International Earth Day is celebrated on April 22nd every year. The day raises awareness about environmental protection and safety. It also highlights a necessity to balance the economic, social and environmental needs of present and future generations. The day marked by various events. The day was marked by various events held to support for environmental protection and for solving environmental issues for better future. Meanwhile, speaking at an occasion, State Environmental Minister Ram Das Kadam said that this, uh, our, this is our duty to protect the environment by controlling pollution and planting more and more trees. He also appealed to citizens for tree plantation. On the similar line, an event was organized in Pune where Sunita Kalyani of Kalyani Industries planted trees at the Impress Garden in the presence of Deputy Mayor Bandhu Gaikwad. The Indian Institute of Mass Communication in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is conducting a series of media workshops on communicating science and biosafety across the country. The two-day workshop on the same topic was concluded today in the city. The objective of the workshop is to deliberate on challenges in the area of communication of agricultural biotechnology and biosafety. While addressing the workshop, former director of National Institute of Science Communication, Delhi, Dr. G.P. Fonke said that the media should promote public awareness regarding biotechnology and biosafety issues. These technologies are very helpful in agricultural sector to solve the problem of malnutrition. He also stressed that media should give more importance to weather forecast, which can make changes in scenario of agricultural sector. That's it then in this edition of MetroScan from Mumbai. We'll be back tomorrow evening with more updates from the commercial capital. Till then, it's back to Delhi Studios. Thank you for watching. Namaskar.